Greetings mere mortal, welcome to my lab. My name is Sean Shuping, and in today's experiment, I'm gonna be bootstrapping a Juju controller inside of my OpenStack cloud, and then use it to deploy applications to OpenStack-based VMs. In a previous experiment, I showed you how to use Juju and Maz to deploy an OpenStack cloud. This time around, I wanted to bootstrap an inner Juju controller, which I'll use to deploy applications which will be running inside of the OpenStack cloud. So while this might seem like a self-explanatory exercise, it did take me a little while to figure out what was actually needed to make all of this possible. So let's get straight into the config. First thing we'll need to do is make a change to the outer Juju model, which built the OpenStack. This is to ensure that the Juju CLI will be able to find a valid image when bootstrapping the controller. So we'll head into the charm store and add the Glance Simple Stream Sync Charm to the OpenStack model. After this, we'll create a relation from Simple Streams to Keystone OpenStack's identity provider. So what this charm does is automatically syncs the latest available Ubuntu images from cloud-images.ubuntu.com into OpenStack. And it adds all the relevant metadata to the images. It also creates OpenStack endpoints, which the Juju CLI uses to query the details of available images in the cloud. So I'll be bootstrapping the inner Juju controller from a worker instance I'd previously set up inside of my OpenStack project. So the first thing that I'll need to do on the worker shell is install the latest version of the Juju CLI. So we'll simply run a sudo snap install juju dash dash classic. Next, we'll need to add our OpenStack to the list of clouds available to the Juju CLI. So we'll simply run a juju add dash cloud openstack.dev0.co.za. We'll set the cloud type to OpenStack and then we'll provide the API endpoint for the cloud. This can be found by going to the API access blade on the OpenStack dashboard. Click view credentials and copy the authentication URL. In my case, I'm gonna be using user pass as the authentication type and then we can go ahead and enter the OpenStack region name. And in my case, the region's endpoint is the same as the cloud endpoint. Lastly, seeing as though we don't have a controller yet, we'll just say yes to adding the credentials to the local client only. Now we'll go ahead and create a credential for the Juju CLI to authenticate to OpenStack. Uh, we'll start by creating a new file called credentials.yaml. And in this file, we'll provide the cloud name, region, username, password, etc. Important thing to note in here is that we'll provide an empty value for domain dash name, but we'll provide a value for the project dash domain dash name. Uh, the tenant ID is the project ID found on the user credentials back in the OpenStack dashboard. Check the links in the description of this video for an example of the file. After this, we can actually add the credentials to Juju by running juju add-credential, name of the cloud, dash f, credentials.yaml. Now, finally, we can go ahead and bootstrap the inner Juju controller. So we'll run a juju bootstrap cloud name, space juju controller friendly name, and I want a tiny controller, so I'm going to pass a constraint of memory equals one gig. Inherently, OpenStack will have more than one network, so we'll add a config option, network equals ID of our internal network. You can get this from the OpenStack dashboard by going to project, network, networks, select the internal network and copy the network ID. Uh, lastly, we'll add another config parameter, use floating dash IP equals true, so that we can interact with the controller from outside of the cloud. Now that the controller is built, we can go ahead and log in and start building models and deploying applications to the underlying OpenStack cloud. The Juju GUI is a nice way to relate and configure your apps before deploying, but on an OpenStack cloud, you'll probably end up with an error saying multiple possible networks found once you deploy. 
So to get around this, we can simply create the model on the command line uh, by running a juju add dash model model name. And then we can use juju model dash config network equals the network ID to bind the whole model to a specific network. This way, if we add more charms to the model later on, we don't need to add the network ID to each and every charm. After we commit and deploy the model using the Juju GUI, if we check out the Juju status now, we can see that instances are being deployed with no errors. And if we switch back to the OpenStack dashboard, we can see that new instances with the Juju naming convention have come into existence. And that is pretty much it. Juju controller bootstrapped on OpenStack. Uh, nice, simple, easy, clean, fast. Uh, if you've enjoyed this geeky video, please give it a like. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, as always, I will see you in the next video.